Whole life insurance and the stock market. We've gotten a lot of interest on this topic lately with the whole GameStop situation that's going on, which is very interesting and pretty exciting when you look at it, <laughs> just aside from the stock, stock market, what actually occurred there. Uh, but the topic of this video, whole life insurance and the stock market. If you've ever been interested in whole life insurance, and if you've talked to an agent, you likely have heard, hey, whole life insurance is the best area to position money. It is a safe, liquid, tax-free area to position money, no risk. You've got a unique feature in the sense that once a dollar passes through the cash value of a policy, regardless if I just let it sit and grow or if I decide to borrow against it, I continue to receive interest on all of my money like borrowing from a piece of real estate that does nothing but appreciate over time. Very attractive in that respect. So often we hear a lot of good around whole life insurance and then with stocks, you've got all this risk, you have to pay taxes on the gains, it's not worth it. Have you ever heard that when talking to an insurance agent? Then on the other side of the fence, if you were to talk to a financial advisor that is very, very good at what he does, perhaps with investing your money in the stock market, managed money, he or she may say, whole life insurance is the worst area to position money. It might earn between one to 2%. You get life insurance, but it's, ex it's very expensive. Keep your money in the market, hold it there long-term, a lot like Warren Buffett, and you will see 8% returns over time. You know, often, <clears throat> we've got some benefits to the market here. It is whole life insurance versus the stock market. One is better than the other. And frankly, you can make arguments on both sides of the fence, especially if you're an expert in either of the areas. The thing is, how do we use them both in conjunction with each other? Instead of saying one's better than the other, which what's the point of that? Just to choose sides and fight and not be productive with our time? I hate that kind of stuff. Know the benefits, the pros and cons of any product, features, benefits, and then understand how we can use it together rather than just be single-minded or closed-minded to say, okay, this is the only way to go. Every product out there, every strategy out there has a pro and a con. If we can understand it in a transparent manner, then we can select the options, the products that are actually best for us. Kind of like you can choose a product off of Amazon. So whole life insurance, we touched on these benefits here. Safe, liquid, tax-free that three to 5% net return at the end of the day, and that is a tax-free yield. So when looking at stocks, could I do better than three to 5% with stocks? Yeah, way better. At the same time, I could lose money, but let's say I do 8% with stocks. Do I have to pay any type of tax? Do I have any fees associated with those, with those stocks, those investments there? Perhaps, but then at the same time, my argument's going to be high risk, high reward. Yeah, I mean, I could take the S&P 500 over the course of 2019 and see a 30% return in one year. But then at the same time in 2008, I can see almost a 30% loss. So it does depend on what year and what time period I'm studying. Here's what I'll, I'll mention though, because again, it's not to say one's better than the other. I want to do this. How do I use them together? is if I am positioning money here, here you go, solid performance long-term. And just look at any, any graphs or any charts and look at Warren Buffett. You know, my big thing from a business philosophy, a business mindset is copying those business owners that do extremely well, have built successful businesses. We study Amazon so much, their mission statement, and then how they operate as a company, extremely successful. So if your thing is investing in the market, learn from people who have done very well. Warren Buffett's a great example, and there are many others. Point being, while this works very well, at the same time, you see the ultra-wealthy big banks and corporations utilize cash value life insurance as well. So the thing is, again, rather than take one side and say, ah, oh, it's better than the other, the other option stinks, I'm not going that direction, how do I work it all together? Leverage the pros and cons. Wealthy use both. If you talk to, talk to an insurance agent or a financial advisor, that's where you're going to hear, this is the best, or this is the best, one or the other. Let me 
demonstrate real quickly. Have you ever seen anything like this? There we go. Let's assume we are going to pay in $10,000 per year into a policy for 20 years. And we will assume that the policy will earn 5%. Over 20 years, what do I have to earn or what will that 5% return produce me? I've paid in $200,000, I have $350,000. Will a whole life policy do that? I might shoot it a little bit more conservative, say four to four and a half, half percent at the 20 year mark, but you're, you're in the right neighborhood, let's put it that way, if a policy is constructed properly and with one of the larger mutual companies. Now, with that said, anyone's going to look at that that has experience and success in the market and say 5%, like I can do better than that. My father would say that all the time. The thing is, if I can earn, let's say 8% average in the market, well, that hits me almost at 500 grand but now, if I'm in a 30% tax bracket, that's gonna pull down my actual yield. Let's say I have a 1% management fee, can even be half a percent. Whatever it might be is going to pull down my effective yield. That's often an argument you will hear from an insurance agent, someone like us. Our company specializes in cash value life insurance. Now, with that said, this approach, and this is my personal philosophy, <clears throat> I don't like it, even though it's the product I'm selling, cash value life insurance. And the reason why is because over time, I, I mean, just in recent years, I, I love, again, studying businesses. We have seen so many people do well short term. And even positioning yourself in some stocks for the long haul can be a great idea. Anytime we're going to invest in the market or if I were going to do it personally, I'm not going to study the history of a stock necessarily. I'm going to study that business. What is the company's business model? Are they constantly innovating and growing or are they sort of fizzling out? And you can usually tell just by watching, watching and studying the CEO. Maybe you've got further insight, whatever it might be, but I'm going to study that company. But back to the topic of this, because there's always this debate, whole life versus the stock market. Okay, throw that out the window. How do I use them both together? Because you easily can. Using them together, <clears throat> copying the wealthy. So the business owners that I've worked with over time that have done very well for themselves, typically leverage both. So here is an example of a 40 year old male positioning funds in a cash value life insurance policy because it is a safe, liquid, tax-free area to position funds. He has money in the market as well. He views this really as a fixed savings asset, almost in a sense, a bond alternative. I wouldn't necessarily call it that, I'm not giving any tax or investment advice in this video, but this is really his approach, how he's viewing this situation. Okay, here's a nice alternative. I've got life insurance as well which protects my assets and my income, but at the same time, this is a decent return on my cash value life insurance policy. So if he earns, this shows what he's earning year over year, tops out at a little under five and a half percent. The question comes up, well, what would I have to earn, or I should say, what's the equivalent to a market return based on my tax bracket? So if he's in a tax bracket of say 35%, he's pumping a lot of money into this product. What's the impact here? Well, <clears throat> let's do this. So what this represents is a taxable equivalent yield, assuming he's in a 35% tax bracket. Okay, so for example, <clears throat> if I look at the life insurance policy, remember, if we slice everything right, if we set the policy up properly, this is a tax-free yield. This is where so many people are attracted to it, especially on the distribution side, when I wanna take income from it or take out policy loans to invest in my business, invest in real estate. That's where a huge, huge area of attraction lies in these products. The tax-free component though, if I'm earning 5.4% tax-free, if I'm in a 35% tax bracket, what I would have to earn 
in a taxable account would be 8.35%. Now, if we're looking at capital gains tax, the situation is going to be a little bit different. Point being, this is the kind of stuff that we like to see up front, not saying one's better than the other, because with the stock, with the stock market, if we pick them right, we could do a whole lot better than 8% in some years. So again, how do we use them in conjunction with each other? What are we comfortable with? What are we not comfortable with? Really, in my opinion, a cash value life insurance product is a great fixed savings asset. The death benefit is always paid out income tax-free, great for income protection and estate planning as well. And then it's a nice alternative if I've got a ton of money in cash doing nothing for me. So hope this helps. Know this was a, a lot of information of how to work things together rather than one versus the other. But hope it helps again and reach out with any questions. We'll talk to you soon. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.